Hi, welcome. I'm Mary, a librarian at the Claremont Branch Library. Happy Monday. Being that it's Monday, it is time for our poetry reading. So in honor of International Friendship Day, uh, which was July 30th, and National Friendship Day, which was just this last Sunday on August 2nd, all these poems are going to share the theme of friendship. So most of my poems today are fairly short, so I have quite a few of them but uh, they are all somehow related to friendship. So let's go ahead and start with the first poem that I have for you today, which is a poem called A Time to Talk, and it's by Robert Frost. When a friend calls to me from the road and slows his horse to a meaning walk, I don't stand still and look around on all the hills I haven't hoed and shout from where I am, what is it? No not as there is a time to talk. I thrust my hoe into the mellow ground, blade end up and five feet tall, and plod. I go to the stone wall for a friendly visit. Uh, the next few poems I have are all by Edgar Guest. He wrote quite a few poems about friendship, and these are just three of my favorites by him. The first is called A Friend's Greeting. I'd like to be the sort of friend that you have been to me. I'd like to be the help that you've always been glad to be. I'd like to mean as much to you each minute of the day as you have meant, old friend of mine, to me along the way. I'd like to do the big things and the splendid things for you, to brush the gray out from your skies and leave them only blue. I'd like to say the kindly things that I so oft have heard and feel that I could rouse your soul the way that mine you've stirred. I'd like to give you back the joy that you have given me, yet that we're wishing you a need I hope will never be. I'd like to make you feel as rich as I, who travel on, undaunted in the darkest hours, with you to lean upon. I'm wishing at this Christmas time that I could but repay a portion of the gladness that you've strewn along my way. And could I have one wish this year, this only would it be. I'd like to be the sort of friend that you have been to me. And this next one is called Old Friends, also by Edgar Guest. I do not say new friends are not considerate and true, or that their smiles ain't genuine, but still I'm telling you that when a feller's heart is crushed and aching with pain, and teardrops come a-splashin' down his cheeks like summer rain, because his grief and loneliness are more than he can bear. Somehow it's only old friends, then, that really seem to care. The friends who've stuck through thick and thin, who've known you good and bad, your faults and virtues, and have seen the struggles you have had. When they come to you, gentle-like, and take your hand and say, Cheer up, we're with you still, it counts, for that's the old friend's way. The new friends may be fond of you for what you are today. They've only known you rich, perhaps, and only seen you gay. You can't tell what's attracted them. Your station may appeal. Perhaps they smile on you because you're doing something real. But old friends who've seen you fail and also seen you win, who've loved you either up or down, stuck to you, thick or thin, who knew you as a budding youth and watched you start to climb, through weal and woe, still friends of yours and constant all the time. When trouble comes and things go wrong, I don't care what you say, they are the friends you'll turn to, for you want the old friend's way. The new friends may be richer and more stylish too, but when your art is aching and you think your sun won't shine again, it's not the riches of new friends you want. It's not their style. It's not their airs of grandeur, then. It's just the old friend's smile. The old hand that has helped before, stretched out once more to you. The old words ringing in your ears, so sweet and oh, so true. The tenderness of folks who know just what your sorrow means. These are the things on which, somehow, your spirit always leans. When grief is pounding at your breast and new friends disappear, 
and to the old ones tried and true you turn for aid and cheer and my last poem by Edgar Guest is called The Making of a Friend. We nodded as we passed each day, and smiled and went along our way. I knew his name, he knew mine, but neither of us made a sign that we possessed a common tie. We barely spoke as we passed by. How fine he was I never guessed, the splendid soul within his breast I never saw. From me were hid the many kindly deeds he did. His gentle ways I didn't know, or I'd have claimed him long ago. Then trouble came to me one day, and he was the first to come and say the cheering words I longed to hear. He offered help, and standing near, I felt our, sor our lives in sorrow blend. My neighbor had become my friend. How many smiles from day to day I've missed along my narrow way. How many kindly words I've lost. What joy has my indifference cost. This glorious friend that now I know would have been friendly years ago. Next poem has a bit of a similar bent. It's by Henry David Thoreau, and it is called I Knew a Man by Sight. I knew a man by sight, a blameless wight, who for a year or more had daily passed my door, yet converse none had had with him. I met him in a lane, him and his cane, about three miles from home, where I had chanced to roam, and volumes stared at him and him at me. In a more distant place I glimpsed his face and bowed instinctively. Staring, he bowed to me, bowed simultaneously and passed along. Next, in a foreign land, I grasped his hand, and had a social chat about this thing and that, as I had known him well a thousand years. Late in a wilderness, I shared his mess, for he had hardships seen, and I a wanderer been. He was my bosom friend, and I was his. And as methinks shall all, both great and small, that ever lived on earth, early or late their birth, stranger and foe, one day each other know. This is by Emily Bronte, and it is called Love and Friendship. Love is like the wild rose briar, friendship like the holly tree. The holly is dark when the rose briar blooms, but which will bloom most constantly? The wild rose briar is sweet in spring, its summer blossoms scent the air, yet wait till winter comes again, and who will call the wild briar fair? Then scorn the silly rose wreath now, and deck thee with the holly's sheen, that when December blights thy brow, he still may leave thy garland green. This next poem is by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, and it is called Arrow and the Song. I shot an arrow into the air. It fell to earth, I knew not where. For so swiftly it flew, the sight could not follow its flight. I breathed a song into the air. It fell to earth, I knew not where. For who has sight so keen and strong that it can follow the flight of song? Long, long afterward, in an oak, I found the arrow still unbroke, and the song from beginning to end I found again in the heart of a friend. Next poem is by Mary Elizabeth Coleridge, and it is called Gone. About the little chambers of my heart, friends have been coming, going, many a year. The doors stand open there. Some, lightly stepping, enter, some depart. Freely they come, and freely go, at will. The walls give back their laughter, all day long they fill the house with song. One door alone is shut, one chamber still. And next I'm going to move to two poems that were written by poets to 
their specific friends. And the first is by P.B. Shelley, and it is two words worth. Poet of nature, thou hast wept to know that things depart which never may return. Childhood and youth, friendship and love's first glow, have fled like sweet dreams, leaving thee to mourn. These common woes I feel, one loss is mine, which thou too feelest, yet I alone deplore. Thou wert as a lone star, whose light did shine on some frail bark in winter's midnight roar. Thou hast like to a rock-built refuge stood, above the blind and battling multitude. In honor, poverty, thy voice did weave, songs consecrate to truth and liberty. Deserting these, thou leavest me to grieve, thus having been that thou shouldst cease to be. Second poem is written by Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and it is called To Susan B. Anthony on her 80th birthday. My honored friend, I'll ne'er forget that day in June when we first met. Oh, would I had the skill to paint my vision of that Quaker saint, robed in pale blue and silver gray. No silly fashions did she essay. Her brow so smooth and fair, neath coils of soft brown hair. Her voice was like the lark so clear, so rich and pleasant to the ear. The prentice hand on man oft tried, now made her in her the nation's pride. We met and loved, ne'er to part, hand clasped in hand, heart bound to heart. We've traveled west years together, day and night in stormy weather. Climbing the rugged suffrage hill, bravely facing every ill, resting, speaking, everywhere, oft times in the open air, from sleighs, ox carts, and coaches, besieged with bugs and roaches, all for the emancipation of the women of our nation. Now we've had enough of travel, and in turn laid down the gavel. In triumph, having reached fourscore, We'll give our thoughts to art and lore. In the time-honored retreat, side by side we'll take a seat. To younger hands resign the reins, with all the honors and the gains. United down life's hill we'll glide, whate'er the coming years betide. Parted only when first, in time, eternal joys are thine or mine. Really short poem. Uh, gives a little bit of an interesting view on friendship by Daniel Henderson, simply called Friendship. No foe could strike this blow, could draw this blood, this tear. By the deep wound I know, a friend was here. The next poem is called We Have Been Friends Together, and it's by Carolyn Elizabeth Sarah Norton. We have been friends together in sunshine and in shade, since first beneath the chestnut trees, in infancy we played. But coldness dwells within thy heart, a cloud is on thy brow. We have been friends together, shall a light word part us now? We have been gay together, we have laughed at little jests, for the fount of hope was gushing, warm and joyous in our breasts. But laughter now hath fled thy lip, and sullen glooms thy brow. We have been gay together, shall a light word part us now? We have been sad together, we have wept with bitter tears, o'er the grass-grown graves where slumbered the hopes of early years. The voices which are silent there would bid thee clear thy brow. We have been sad together, oh, what shall part us now? This is a poem called Thank You by Henry Timrod. I thank you, kind and best beloved friend, with the same thanks one murmurs to a sister, when, for some gentle favor, he hath kissed her. Less for the gifts than for the love you send, less for the flowers than what the flowers convey. If I indeed divine their meaning truly, and not unto myself ascribe unduly, 
things which you ne neither meant nor wished to say. Oh, tell me, is the hope then all misplaced? And am I flattered by my own affection? But in your beauteous gift methought I traced something above a short-lived predilection, and which, for that I know no dearer name, I designate as love, without love's flame. Poem by Edna St. Vincent Millay, and it is simply called Travel. The railroad track is miles away, and the day is loud with voices speaking. Yet there isn't a train goes by all day, but I hear its whistle shrieking. All night there isn't a train goes by, though the night is still for sleep and dreaming. But I see its cinders red on the sky, and hear its engine steaming. My heart is warm with the friends I make, and better friends I'll not be knowing. Yet there isn't a train I wouldn't take, no matter where it's going. Now is a poem by William Wordsworth called Traveling. This is the spot. How mildly does the sun shine in between the fading leaves. The air in habitual silence of this wood is more than silent. And this bed of heath, where shall we find so sweet a resting place? Come, let me see thee sink into a dream of quiet thoughts, protracted till thine eye be calm as water when the winds are gone, and no one can tell whither. My sweet friend, we too have had such happy hours together that my heart melts in me to think of it. We're getting the, near the end of my selections, but the next one is by Matt Mark Van Doren, and it's called Communication. Suddenly, across the road, a river of strange waters flowed, and my old friend I ran to see stood and only waved at me. I cried aloud the things we did so long ago, and the stream slid more quietly a little while. I saw him nod and faintly smile, remembering. Then, all around, the current intervened its sound. Poem by Anne Finch, called Friendship Between Ophelia and Ardelia. Ophelia, what friendship is, Ardelia, show. Ardelia, tis to love as I love you. Ophelia, this account, so short, though kind, suits not my inquiring mind. Therefore farther now repeat, what is friendship when complete? Ardelia, tis to share all joy and grief, tis to lend all due relief, from the tongue, the heart, the hand, tis to mortgage house and land, for a friend to be sold a slave. Tis to die upon a grave, if a friend therein do lie. Ophelia, this indeed, though carried high, this though more than e'er was done, underneath the rolling sun, this has all been said before. Can Ardelia say no more? Ardelia, words indeed no more can show, but tis to love, as I love you. My last two poems uh, we have by William Brooks, My Garden Walls. My heart a garden is, a garden walled, and in the wide white spaces near the gates grow tall and showy flowers, sun-loving flowers, where they are seen of every passer-by, who straightway faring on doth bear the tale how bright my garden is, and filled with sun. But there are shaded walks, far from the gates, so far the passer-by can never see, where violets grow for thoughts of those afar, and rue for memories of vanished days, and sweet forget-me-nots to bid me think, with tenderness, lest I grow utter cold, and hard as women grow who never weep. And when comes times, I fear that love is dead, and sorrow rules as king the world's white ways. I go with friends I love among these beds, where friend and flower do speak alike to me, sometimes with silences, sometimes with words. 
Tis then I thank my God for those high walls that shut the friends within, the world without, that passers-by may only see the sun, that friends I love may share the quiet shade. My last poem for you is simply called On Friendship, and it's by Khalil Gibran. And a youth said, Speak to us of friendship. And he answered, saying, Your friend is your needs answered. He is your field, which you sow with love and reap with thanksgiving. And he is your board and your fireside. For you come to him with your hunger, and you seek him for peace. When your friend speaks his mind, you fear not the nay in your own mind, nor do you withhold the I. And when he is silent, your heart ceases not to listen to his heart. For without words in friendship, all thoughts, all desires, all expectations are born and shared with joy that is unacclaimed. When you part from your friend, you grieve not, for that which you love most in him may be clearer in his absence, as the mountain to the climber is clearer from the plain. And let there be no purpose in friendship, save the deepening of the spirit. For love that seeks aught but the disclosure of its own mystery is not love, but a net cast forth, and only the unprofitable is caught. And let your best be for your friend. If he must know the ebb of your tide, let him know its flood also. For what is your friend that you should seek him with hours to kill? Seek him always with hours to live. For it is his to fill your need, but not your emptiness. And in the sweetness of friendship, let there be laughter and sharing of pleasures. For in the dew of little things, the heart finds its morning and is refreshed. So those are the poems I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed hearing poems about friendship. Um, maybe give a call to a friend of yours and just let them know how much they mean to you. Uh, and I hope that you will join again next week. I will be doing poems on the theme of food, so that should be a fun week also. So I hope that you have a good week, and I look forward to sharing new poems with you this coming Monday. Until then, have a wonderful week.